Good evening. Tonight we continue our series in Psalm 51, at this time turning to verses 7 to 12, and this is what it says. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Amen. Now, when we were looking at verses 1 and 2, we noted that there were three different ways in which David wished to be cleansed. Uh, The first was the blotting out, the erasing of the records held against him. Now, this was an external thing, uh, more to do with someone who was guilty having all the evidence removed. And of course, this was not enough. And so David uh, seeks to have God do a deep clean of his heart. Uh, Using uh, the word uh, that describes the battering of a stain against a uh, a rock by a washerwoman, uh, David cries out to God. He is seeking that God beat the otherwise indelible stain out of the fabric of his heart. Now, To this, David adds a third term, a third cleansing term, uh, talking about wishing to be made pure, uh, to be made ceremonially clean, so that once again he can stand in the presence of God. So across the spectrum of the legal status, the condition of his heart, and in his connection to God, he wants the consequences of his persistent, habitual desire to sin dealt with. Indeed, he goes on to note how deeply ingrained his sin is in verses 3 to 6, all of which brings him back to that same threefold request to be cleansed in verses 7 and 9 here. At this time, he asks to be clean in the same three ways, but in reverse, starting with his connection with God. At the beginning of verse 7, he says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Then, crying out for the use of the hyssop, a form of antiseptic, he again seeks to be clean. There is to be no room for any blemish, and so he asks that God himself would clean him so utterly, so completely, that he would once again be able to stand in his presence. And having sought this, he once again pleads for the cleansing of his heart from that deep, indelible stain of sin. And that's in the second part of verse 7. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He desires that the stain be removed, that he be made um, white as snow. It is similar to the call from God in Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah 1 verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says Yahweh. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. What a message of hope we have there. That God would take the stain-filled man, uh, the one who has consistently steeped himself in sin, and make him clean. Uh, He would extract the stain that no one else could. And so David stands before God as a man stained crimson, and yet he knows that in Yahweh there is one who would make his heart as white as snow. And then the third of the cleansing terms emerges again, uh, this time in verse 9, when he returns to the records of his guilt. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. He wants God to look away. He wants the records to be purged. He wants to be free from the guilt that is his by right. He knows that he is not innocent. He is guilty and the records show it. And as he turns to God, he turns to the one who can wipe away the accounts, who can make it so that David can stand without an accuser. So we have these three ways in which sin needs to be dealt with in the life of the man of God. He cries out, not in despair, for he knows that Yahweh will respond, uh, that he can indeed be made clean. However, as glorious as that is, as wondrous as being clean is, none of these cleansings are the real solution. For even if God were to forgive him, if he were to restore the relationship, if the heart was made clean, the records expunged, uh, the covenant repaired and renewed a million times, David, the habitual sinner, would simply break it a million and one. 
After having sought for the consequences of his habitual continual sin to be dealt with, David recognises that the root of the problem needs to be dealt with. He needs to be dealt with. And therefore something bigger than the cleansing was required, as wonderful as it was, something more permanent had to happen in order to halt that continual decline into sin. And this is what brings us to the centrepiece of the whole psalm in verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. With the realisation that a temporary cleansing was inadequate, David cries out, Create in me a new heart. It's not enough that the inward parts be made clean, but remade, utterly recrafted and made new. So that the heart and everything that issues from it was remade by God. This represents the great hope that the ruins of humanity could be restored. It reveals a desire not just for forgiveness, but for the end of the need for forgiveness. An end of the rebellion and that desire to sin. Uh, To be a people then that are no longer wrestling with the problem of a heart that needs to be changed. Now this is not a cry that is unique to David. Uh, We see it in the books of Jeremiah. We see it in Ezekiel. Uh, Jeremiah 31-33 says this, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yahweh. I will put my Torah within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. You see that same desire to be changed from the inside in uh, Ezekiel 36, verse 26. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. There is a need to be seismically changed at a fundamental level. And that is the cry that has been offered up by all of these errant saints of God through the ages. The lament of David is not just that he wants to be forgiven, he needs to be changed and made better in order to be the person he could and should be. David just doesn't want to be here again, asking for forgiveness for such terrible sins. He, it's more than just the forgiveness. He doesn't want to commit these sins. And yet bigger than that, he doesn't even want the desire to commit these sins. The problem was never that he was unaware of the nature of the rebellion he was carrying out. The problem was that he actually wanted to do these things. The problem was with his heart, and that is what needs to change. The situation that David finds himself in and the reason for his plaintive cries can be seen in verses 11 to 12. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. As I noted earlier, uh, David uh, seeks to be clean because he wants to experience the presence of God. He wants to have the Holy Spirit remain with him so that he would have restored that joy of his salvation. Uh, David is not content to simply be a man of God. He wants to be a man with God. The cries of the psalmist then should have resonance with us as we read these verses. We too should be turning to God, sensitive to the things that would act as a barrier in our relationship with him, uh, the things that would stain us because we hold them too close. Uh, We too should be aware of the fight against our fallen nature and our need to come to God and ask for cleansing and changing. Though we are forgiven, uh, we are a people whose crimes are blotted out in our book, we too should wish to resist the brokenness that lies within us. When I read these verses, it's not enough for me to remain detached and simply observe David, a man who had failed, a man who needed to be made right with God. Instead, I look at his words and it helps to remind me of my own predicament, to help stir within me something, that desire to be sensitive to the stains that would cling to me. Um, even at a human level, when we take a shower, when we have the grime blasted away, it recalibrates our senses. This is what David is talking about spiritually. You see, after a shower, after you have been made clean, the clothing you'd been made, that's sorry, the clothing that you had been wearing prior, um, you know, you may have been thinking it was clean enough, maybe for another day, you might have thought it was fine. And yet once you come out of that shower, you can smell 
that these clothes are not as quite as clean as you thought. All those smells that blended into the background, you are now sensitive to. You are aware of the dirt. You are now aware that these clothes need to be made clean before you can put them back on. You see what is really there once again. Now, the Bible actually says that we are similarly cleansed by the word of God. We see that in John 17, 17 or Ephesians 5, 26, where the forgiven, ledger blotted people of God are then cleansed by the word of God. It's supposed to recalibrate our senses. We are supposed to be sensitive to the filth of the sin that lies around us. When we read these words of David, we're not to, again, see him at a distance and look at him needing uh, to be sorted out. We are to be reminded that we too need to be sensitive to what lies around us. Uh, the point is, is not so much that we would be perfect, but that we would want to be. You know, to be like David, struck again with the perfection of God, to be confronted with the need for God to do the changing and cleansing within us as an ongoing thing. Until that blessed day when we see him face to face and are renewed and we never lose the battles against our old selves. You know, one day I will have to stand before the throne of God and I know that the books that recorded my crimes are blotted out for I am a child of his. Praise God. Yeah, whilst I am on earth, I want to be cleansed. I want to have the word of God correct me. I want it to inspire me. I wanted to recalibrate my senses so that I go forth unwilling to settle for anything less than the presence of God in my life now. When I think about what it means to be a Christian, I, I look at texts such as this one tonight and I'm reminded, you know, it's not a religion of rituals or a, a religion of morals or a religion of teaching. It is about being able to know God. To know the very presence of God, to have God manifested in our lives. I know that I want God to be near him, have him dwell in the midst of my life. I want to give him the throne of my heart. I want him to shine into a world of darkness and dwell through me. So I want the presence of God to be around me and in me and touching a broken world through me. Until that day when I hear his voice say, well done. So we, we want to be clean. We want to be sensitive. We want the word of God to change us here and now. And that is the point of these verses. Amen.